Amina's Voice by Hannah Khan, Chapter 15 Early the next morning, I find Mustafa in the kitchen. He's chewing on oatmeal with peanut butter mixed into it. I catch a whiff of his sporty, fresh-scented shower gel and notice his hair is wet. He's sitting in a t-shirt and shorts, even though it's chilly in the house, and I'm wearing fleece pajamas. What are you doing up so early, I ask. Mustafa usually sleeps in until noon on Saturdays. I went for a run. I need to do some extra conditioning. Why? You already made the team, didn't you? Yeah, but if I want to be a starter, I have to show the coach that I'm working hard and improving. Aren't you the only freshman on the team? Yep. Mustafa's spoon scrapes the bottom of his bowl. Doesn't that make you feel good? That's not the point, Amina. I think I can be the best player on the team. I just need to work harder than everyone else. I wonder if Mustafa gets nervous before his games, knowing that everyone is watching him and that at any moment he could fall on his face or shoot an air ball. If he does, he does a good job hiding it. I kind of want to tell him that I'm proud of him for making the team and that I wish he had been at dinner last night, but I don't. We don't say stuff like that to each other. Baba walks into the kitchen wearing his bathrobe. So, you're awake. We need to talk. He sits down at the table across from Mustafa like he means business. Since you cannot remember when to come home at night, your mother and I have decided that you're not going out with the team anymore. You go to the games, but then come home, Baba speaks firmly. When we got home from dinner, I went upstairs and got into bed. I didn't hear when Mustafa got back, but it must have been pretty late. But Baba, they're my friends, Mustafa starts to protest. We'd prefer you spend more time with people your own age who are a better influence, and with Yusuf and the other boys from the Islamic Center. If Baba only knew about the boys from the Islamic Center. I'm not a little kid anymore. You don't need to plan playdates for me, Mustafa scowls. Watch it, Baba warns. You're lucky. I was so angry I was going to make you quit the team, but your Thaya John convinced me to let you play. Thaya John? Really? Mustafa says. Yes, he said that you had to take responsibility for your actions, but that you also have a commitment to your team. Wait, so Thiajan is anti-music, but he is pro-basketball? If you can show us that you can follow the rules, then we can talk about this again when we feel it is time. But until then, this is final. Okay, Baba, Mustafa says quietly. I'm glad to see that he isn't starting a fight. We all know that will be a losing battle. And I need you to understand that we make rules for a reason, not to punish you. I know, I know, I get it. Can I go now? I went as Mustafa's tone grows rude, but Baba just nods. Mustafa picks up his empty bowl and drops it in the sink. I watch my father slump in his chair in his striped bathrobe with his bed head and black and white stubble on his chin. He seems worn out, even though the day has just started. I get up from my seat and put my arms around him as Mustafa goes up to his room. Mama walks into the kitchen wearing a freshly ironed shawar kameez. Since Thiajan has been staying with us, she doesn't hang around in her pajamas and robe on weekend mornings like usual. And she certainly doesn't smile as much. I don't blame her. You guys already ate? I was going to make eggs. I'll have some. Baba absently strokes my hair. I think about Baba letting Thiajan tell him to let Mustafa play on the team. Did Baba agree with him, or was it that he couldn't say no? I decided I needed to know some answers for myself, and after taking a deep breath, asked a question that has been sitting on my chest like a lead blanket for the past week. Baba, why does God hate music? What? Mama says. She puts down her spatula and turns to face me. Where did you get that idea? I heard Thaya John telling Baba last week that it was haram for me to play music. Salim, are you hearing this? What did he say? And what did you say to him? Mama hisses softly, even though the shower is running in the bathroom upstairs and Thaya John won't be able to hear us. Well, he was just saying that music is forbidden. I know we don't agree with that interpretation of Islam, but I couldn't say anything to him, Baba mumbles. Mama lets out an exasperated sigh and comes over to the table. She kneels to be eye level with me and holds me by the shoulders. 
Is that why I haven't heard you practicing your piano or singing this week? You are not doing anything wrong. God does not hate music. I don't believe that or that it's wrong for you to play or to sing. Why would he give you so much talent then? I really want to believe her, but I look at Baba and wait to see what he has to say. I'm sorry, Gita. I guess I should have said what I thought right then. The truth is, I agree with your mother, and I do believe my brother is wrong about this, okay? Okay, but then why did he say that? Your Thiajan has some religious views that are strict, like the not participating in Halloween thing. Some Muslims are extra careful and avoid anything they think might be wrong in any way. Music at the time of the prophet's life was thought to be a harmful influence. I kind of understand, but it's still strange to have witness Baba pretending to agree with his brother. It must have been part of the wanting everyone to be perfect and never disagreeing stuff. There is some music out there that I do think is inappropriate, like music with bad language, but that's different, he continued. Your music is wonderful. I nod. You have to talk to him, Mama says with a frown. I respect by John for his beliefs, but this is too much. We have a right to teach our children our values. What if Amina had never said anything to us and she thought she was doing something wrong for loving music? I wait to see how Baba will react. He listens quietly and then looks lost in thought. You're right, he finally says. I will talk to him. 